Hey guys, welcome back to Match Fishing TV UK. You join me here in the garage. Um, I haven't been fishing for a few weeks actually, but what I have been doing is getting this garage ready uh, to be a little bit more effective when I want to prepare for fishing matches. So what I've done is I've actually built a workbench and above me here you'll see this storage solution that I've got for my rods and stuff. So I'll show you that in a bit. It's mid-March, it started to get really sunny. We can start dreaming about putting decent amounts of bait in and catching big nets of fish. Now, for most people, it's quite difficult to justify going and spending 20, 30 pounds on bait for a session. It's a lot of money. So I've got some good bait hacks for you to be able to go out and put a decent amount of bait in and save yourself a few quid in the process. So stay tuned. So in terms of the garage, um, the first thing that I've done is above the door here, so it's a fold up type of door, I've actually built a system that's um, inspired by sort of a bed frame if you like. So what I've done is I've hung two bits of two before batten, one on each side. And then I've simply put across some two before slats if you like. Now that will take the majority of my rod holdalls, rod tubes, any loose rods, gets them nice and out of the way and it's a bit of storage that's not normally used so that's really handy. And then over the last couple of weeks what I've also done is I've built this contraption. So I've built a workbench and again this isn't a DIY show but the basic premise here is that I've put a bit of two before there's another little uh, storage thing under there, but I put a bit of two before underneath there. I've hung it to the wall as a batten, and then I fixed two before to each side. Big bit on the end here, and I've put three legs on the front. I've braced it with some angle brackets, and I've actually used an old tabletop that I had and a spare bit of uh, thick MDF that I had hanging around. And then look at that, that's a, a little work area for doing your rigs and stuff. You can see that I'm starting to get busy with a few hook lengths when I can uh, muster up the energy to do it. But yeah, so I've got a good little setup moving forward. And of course I've got the lighting here in the garage so I can shut the door. Jobs are good in. So for the match purists, uh, some of what I'm going to say here you're going to completely disagree with and that's fine. This is more aimed at the sort of pleasure anglers um, and everything I'm going to tell you here I've actually got no problem doing in a match whatsoever. I've got to be honest with you, it's never done me any harm but each to their own I get that. So the first thing I would say is when you're doing a pleasure session if you look down at your ground bait bowl and you've got loads of ground bait left don't just chuck it in. If it's okay, carry some plastic bags with you. So those freezer type bags, don't be scared to stick it in a freezer bag. And when you get home, stick it in the freezer. Be absolutely fine um, for, a, for a period of time. Then you can use it again on your next session. The amount of times I see people chucking in, you know, the best part of half a bucket of ground bait at the end of a session, no need be perfectly good for your next pleasure session. Just allow it to fall out obviously before you use it, but it'd be absolutely fine. Might have to give it a spruce up with an extra bit of liquid or whatever, but no problems at all. So that's my first tip, save a bit of money there. Second tip is, I've got a massive container that I keep in the garage with various bits and pieces in it. But I keep pellets, this is an airtight container, ground bait, there's almost a whole bag of ground bait there from a recent session, that's uh, F1 Dark, Sonia Baits, and I get these clips, so if I show you these clips, you can get these little clips from Ikea, they're brilliant about a pound for a pack of those. So get them, clip up your ground bait, so it's nice and airtight still, and keep it in a container. That'll keep it 
pretty much all right for, I would say, six months or so. You have to check it quite regularly, make sure that no nasties have got their way into wherever you're keeping it because you can get moths and stuff like that want to get in. Uh, bag of pellets from last year, you know, they'll be absolutely fine. Some carp pellets I got from last year, check those recently, they're absolutely fine. So yeah, don't throw anything away. The next thing I would say is if you have got a small amount of pellets, so like in here, I've got some eight mil fish mill pellets in here. And if it's not really gonna be enough to fish with, still don't throw them away. Be, be, be smart with it. You can stick those through a blender. You can add those to a bit of your ground bait for an extra bit of attraction. No need to waste anything. The next tip that I've got is when you do go to the bank, get yourself lots of Tupperware. Again, it's nice, it's airtight. If you put it in a normal bait box, it's got the holes in it, obviously, for storing maggots. If you use a nice bit of Tupperware like this, put your pellets in it. So whatever you're intending to use, if you're pellet waggler fishing or something like that, we're gonna use a few pellets. Put it in an airtight container, seal it up when you're not using it. Keep them for ages in there. And my final one, and this is more sort of aimed towards um, when we get into the, the, the deep parts of the summer where the fish are feeding happily and you want to use a load of bait, is packing out ground baits. Um, so we generally use things like breadcrumb, etc., to pack out ground baits, and that's pretty cheap. And again, there's lots of videos on YouTube about you know getting all your old bits of bread from the house and letting them dry out and then making up some nice crumb. But one other thing that I've used quite a lot, and this is heavily nicked from the Carp Boys, uh, who use it all the time in their spob mixes, is, and I've got to lift it up. Ugh. I always have a big bag of this stuff. This is Vitalin. Uh, this is a 15 kilogram bag. Uh, I bought this last year. Again, keep for ages. And this bag cost me about 12 pounds, I think, for 15 kilos. 12 pounds for 15 kilos. Now what Vitalin is, is it's a, it's a dog food. It's got a high corn and cereal content. So by itself, you could probably use it as a fairly effective ground bait. And I know that there are YouTubers out there, totally awesome fishing, if you ever watch that channel, who uses a, a ground bait made of this. Fine for pleasure sessions. If you're doing a match, you might want to slightly refine what you're doing. But there's no reason if you're feeding heavily, if you're putting loads of, uh, I can grab it <clears throat> loads of these type of bait up feeders out that you can't pack out your mix with quite a bit of this stuff now vitamin itself as you can see there's loads of corn in there loads of cereal so what that means is you could use this as it is mix with some ground bait or some pellets and stuff you would have to wet it though give it a good soak i would advise overnight just what the cart boys do but if you wanted to use that as a tactic and sort of mimic spotting absolutely could. You could soak it overnight in um, molasses and, and water which is very very good for bream or some scopex or whatever f1 sweep whatever additives you want to use what i personally do with this stuff is i actually blend it so i blend it into a ground bait consistency so it could then easily mix in and if I'm feeding heavily, I might well put sort of two parts ground bait to one part Vitalin, which over the course of a summer can save you an incredible amount of money. And if I do go on a pleasure session, I will quite happily use this on its own with some additives and maybe a few pellets or whatever stuck in going down to my local lake. And it works a treat. Cheapest ground bait you're ever gonna get. If you're a junior angler and you know, you're trying to save money again, old bits of bread blitzed up bit of this just be careful because it's got high corn content it does tend to set like cement so you've got to really play around with your mixes a bit but i have no problems if i was gonna just use you know some two mil pellets like i've got here bit of vitalin you know play around with the consistency make sure it's not too hard um, but you can have a really great cheap days fishing with the vitalin and uh, if it's all right for the carp boys to catch big carp on, 
it's more than adequate to go to a commercial and bag up on F1s with. My final little tip would be with these. So wafters, sinkers, I've got some Ringer's chocolate orange there. Um, these are great, but they're only for the hook. So you actually get a lot of them in a tub and they can keep for ages like this. Just be careful that they haven't gone too hard. So just give them a little squeeze every now and again, but they're, they're good forever pretty much in there. You just gotta check. And again, when you're on the bank, keep the lid on them straight away. You know, I would even go so far as um, saying that, you know, perhaps put them in a, a vacuum pack if you can, they'll keep even longer, but keep the lid on them when you're not using them. So if you're doing a session through a hot summer's day, don't sit there with the lid off because they're gonna go off even quicker. But that is the cheapest day's carp fishing you'll ever have or bream fishing. You know, sticking these on a method, you maybe need sort of 10, 10 wafters sink as whatever you're using. You could use some Vitalin. You could literally go and bag up for, for pennies if you really wanted to. So good luck with your fishing. Uh, get out there. The weather's looking absolutely beautiful at the moment. So uh, we're not far away from the summer at all. There's a few of my little bait hacks, if you like, uh, to save yourself a little bit of money. And um, yeah, tight lines. <laughs>